Welcome, Fantasy Endgame. We are talking some baseball today, and we're we're about halfway through the first week of the season, I guess. We're through the first weekend of the season. It's too early to panic, right? Or is it not too early to panic? Because as a first-time fantasy baseball player myself, I'm panicking about like almost my entire team right now. <laughs> so luckily, Pierre is here to, to talk us off the ledge, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe we should be panicking to let us know, and also maybe talk some waiver wire who you could be looking at grabbing, who you can be looking at adding the upcoming week. So let's start. Speaking of waiver wire, let's start with some guys. I guess this kind of ties in waiver wire and panic because you've talked about a couple guys on the waiver wire video. One of them I picked up. I thought I made this great move. I picked up Luis Severino. I thought, yeah, I got this. Not so much. So coming off a bad season last year, a bad start already. Are we panicking on him? Or are we still, you know, wait and see? Well, I'll just, I'll say as a fantasy baseball player for like 25 years, whatever. Yeah, it still happens. Like, well, day one, you see a guy get lit up or whatever. And, and you're just like, great. That's it. Like season's over. <laughs> so it never goes away. Right. It never, it never changes. Um, I, I don't know, like with Severino specifically, you almost feel like you want to say like, I sh just should have known better, right? Should have known like all the talk about what's changed in spring and he's healthy. And I guess he is healthy. I mean, he hasn't got hurt yet. That's not why. Um, is he still tipping pitches? I, maybe. I don't think so. But I mean, I, I don't want to overreact to one start. Look, the Mets didn't just lose that game. They just haven't won at all. Right? Brewers just were better than them. Mets slow start. Uh, maybe it'll be a repeat of last year for the Mets. Maybe it'll be a repeat of last year for Severino. Um, I'll just say this. With a player like that who I'm kind of – uh, on the fence about, like, I think this could be it, right? But I know that uh, it's not a guarantee. I mean, look, Severino, he wasn't drafted in every league. And a lot of leagues, he was drafted late or he was picked up, which is why you made the waiver wire video. You can't just assume that they're going to break out, right? You know this could happen. So with a player like that, uh, sometimes I'll sit them on the first start and kind of wait and see. Sometimes I'll do what I did too. Look, I know you're not the only one. I have him too in a couple of leagues. I started him. Uh, and then, so what I'll do now is like, okay, now you're on the bench, buddy. Let's see what you do this time around. And if you come back and I miss your great start, oh, well, at least I know I can keep you for another week, right? Uh, and if he gets lit up again, like, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm not even going to wait for a third start, right? How often, you know, are you going to get fooled by the same thing? So I think you have to take that approach um with pretty much everybody after one start you have to just look at it as one start because again just because it was the first start and the first thing we've seen of this season that's also a lot of times for pitchers especially starting pitchers it's going to be their worst start because they're not completely in you know regular game uh you know regular season shape i guess you could say like not shape shape but you know what i mean uh full mid-season form we want to call it so I'm probably going to keep him on my bench, but I'm not going to cut him just yet. Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, again, being first time playing fantasy baseball, all I can really fall back on is my fantasy football experience. And I think about like a player, like what you just said, it was his first start and it happened to be a bad one. What if he had put together seven or eight really good starts and then got lit up in like start number nine? People will just be like, okay, he had a bad day, right? It's like a right. player. It's like sometimes players, this happens in fantasy football too, right? A player starts out really slow and then people just give up on them and then they end up having a good second half of the season or a good, you know, they, they end up getting hot. So guys can get hot early, late, middle. It's a long season. So, but I like that advice. Okay, I'm, I don't know. I'll, I'll see if I can bench him next week. My team is very light on everything. So I'll see if I can bench him, but I like that advice. And then another picture I know you, you talked about on the waiver wire video going from closer to starter, not that Severino did that. Didn't quite uh, show what we wanted to see in the first start for your Miami Marlins. That's A.J. Puck. So this is a little bit different because at least Severino is a starting pitcher. He's had success in the past. How do you feel about A.J. Puck after his rough outing? So trying to separate, you know, the reality from the uh, the idealized version of the players that I have before our, the season started when I drafted them. And, yeah, so – 
you know, I don't say I'll take the L on a player because, again, it's one start. It's too early to say that. He could look great next week. I'm more worried about Puck because he didn't just get hit. Like, you, you sometimes you have to give some credit to the other team, right? They were there. The offense was good or whatever. Uh, like a player I'm not concerned at all about. Let's just say he's not a starter, but Jose Alvarado. I drafted Jose Alvarado a lot as a reliever, as a closer. Uh he got blasted, but he's facing the Braves. Like, okay, he only had one inning to go out there, right? So, of course, it's going to look worse. And Like, anybody facing the Braves could get, you know, could get uh, homeward off of and, and hit hard. And in that case also, uh, and I'll talk about this more in the panic video, which you'll see tomorrow, uh, why I'm not worried about him, for example. Um, you know, this is a different situation. Uh, with Puck, I am worried because he was just wild. Like, he could not find the strike zone. And so it wasn't just the other team. And yeah, he's facing the Pirates, so he should have done better anyways. But yeah, he was just all over the place. So what's weird about him is this is just it's just not him. And we can't say, well, he's never been a starter before. Okay, so what? that's not the point. Like he's pitched in the majors enough. We know what he is. He's not wild. He's not that type of guy. Like with Severino, like, yeah, he gave up some hits. That happened last year. Like, that's that's not new, right? With Puck, he does not walk batters. He had like a 5% walk rate. So that's what was unusual. You got to wonder, is it just nerves, right? Sometimes you have to wonder. You know, you're right there in Dodger land, right? Yamamoto, big, huge name for the Dodgers. He looked horrible in the first start. <laughs> That's not him. He's not a horrible pitcher. They gave him two hundred plus million dollars for a reason. He's not a horrible pitcher, right? He just first start as a major leaguer. It was overseas, so I'm gonna give him a pass. This is uh, not just my Marlon bias. Not just me saying, "Well, he was my sleeper," so I'm gonna ki no, look. It was one start. If he looks horrible again next time out, okay, fine. Like this is not the type of player you have to keep, but. Uh, oh. Just the Marlins in general looked horrible. I don't even know what to say about that. Are you so you said Severino's a guy you you probably would bench next week if you can and see how he looks. Same thing with Puck. Are you benching him next week if you can and giving him a second? Or are you feeling better <laughs> about him like you're willing to put him back in? The only reason I might stick with Puck is because I believe his next turnaround. I know the Marlins are still uh, scheduled to play the Angels, um, and oh, uh, you know you know with. The Pony not there anymore. It's not the most scary offense this year. Uh, so I no, think they scored, they scored four runs today, which was an outburst. Yeah, that's that's an outburst. It's like does did Trout do something? Yes. If not, then forget it. So I'm willing to give him another chance if he's if he's gonna get the Angels and even the Cardinals is coming up next. That's not a scary offense either. So I'll give Puck one more shot. Um, but that's why I say you know like in our league. Uh, you know, we play weekly and that is one advantage of playing a weekly league versus a roto league, because in a roto league, you know, everything counts for the whole season and your ERA could blow up super fast. And then you're playing catch up, right? Like all season long. And it, yeah, it's a marathon, but still nobody likes playing catch up. And uh, <laughs> in a weekly league, and this is me partly trying to talk you off the ledge, is that, uh, <laughs> you know what, maybe you just take a huge L this week and then next week is totally brand new. So that's one sure. thing that is good. And that's why I think weekly uh, head to head leagues are becoming more popular in baseball. Um, not just that oh, it mimics football, but just because it's more forgiving. Yeah. Well, speaking of taking the big L, uh, let's talk about a, a guy who is, I guess, a well, was supposed to be a closer, but maybe isn't the closer and maybe isn't even any good. Alex Lang of the Tigers. Did not get the save opportunity in game one. And then when he finally got a relief appearance, I don't think he got a single out. If I'm wrong about that, I think he walked the bases loaded and then they yanked him. Are we just are we just cutting bait here? Is this just a guy you could just outright drop at this point? Uh, I think let's wait one more outing. I'll just say this. If, if Foley comes up and gets the next save opportunity, like they don't even give Lang the chance, I think you can cut bait unless you're in like a really deep league like if you're an ala only league no um kind of worried that maybe that whole situation was going to be uncertain or maybe a committee or like you know whoever this is why in really deep 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 leagues uh in fact i'm in one league uh call me insane but i'm in a reliever relief pitcher only league where <laughs> that's it that's all we play with is relief pitchers <laughs> that sounds horrible it, that's that's the equivalent of like playing fantasy football with only tight ends. That's basically yes. what it is. Okay. 
Um, and I drafted Shelby Miller, who were like, wait a minute, Shel that's Shelby? Yes, that's Shelby Miller, because he's set up man with the Tigers. I could see him getting some saves this year. If Foley blows it and Lang blows it. But anyways, um, yeah, I hate to say you don't have to hold on to Lang right now, but I would wait just to be sure, right? Just to be sure. Um, but yeah, Foley could be the guy. Foley turned out to be the guy toward the end of last season, and we just assumed Lang would get the job back. And Lang, he was good this spring, so that kind of looked uh it kind of came out of nowhere that outing i don't know why but again that's just it's one save for foley is one bad outing for lang so we still have to wait a little bit longer but i don't want to wait too much longer for that yeah all right i know you're gonna do a panic video so look for that tomorrow a bunch of guys i'm sure will be on there that everybody has questions about and are worried about let's talk about some guys who actually have been pretty good so far uh starting with will benson for the reds i know he was somebody you were pretty high on uh, going into draft season. So I'm I'm guessing you liked what you saw from him so far. I talked about him uh, for a reason. He was one of my late round sleepers. I was drafting a lot and then talked about him on the waiver wire video as a guy to pick up now before things start happening. Things are happening. You saw it today, game tying home run. Uh, he has power. He has speed. And now he's pretty much going to play every day. I mean, Maybe not every single day, once in a while against lefties will sit, but still strong side platoon, uh, pretty good lineup. I, I love his upside, a toolsy player who finally is looking comfortable at the plate. So he's definitely a guy I'm going to go out and grab. I mean, I could see 20 home runs, 30 stolen base upside. That's pretty good for a guy you can pluck off waivers. Yeah, and I just looked. He's still only 26% rostered on Yahoo League. So is he... Is he your number one ad right now if he's still out there? Which I guess he's out there in most leagues. I think so. I can't think of anybody out there who's probably widely available as far as hitters who's going to have that kind of upside. Um, yeah, this this particular week, heading into next week, you're not going to have a lot of big names, right? Because the guys who you know are worth having have been drafted and nobody really should have made that strong of an impression over two days that you're jumping to get him yet. You know, we don't want to overreact. So um, I think it's almost just as important right now is who you're not adding. Like who are you not going to waste your top waiver claim or spend fab on? You know what I mean? Like like that running back who uh, scores a random touchdown in week one and everybody puts him as their number one claim. Right. Yeah. But this is a guy you liked. I mean, so it's not like he – This it's not like this is some, you know – backup running back or backup you know guy who got the start because of a late scratch and just did something and this is a guy you already like so um yes. and then another guy i know you like uh nick martini had a pretty nice opening day how are you feeling about him so far well that kind of leads back to that point so that's a perfect example of a guy not to run out and grab unless you are in a deep league like i'm in an nl only league Sure, I'll grab him just because he's actually playing a little bit, but not because he had a good opening day. Because again, you take that exact same performance and you put it like two weeks from now, uh, two months from now, any day that's not the first week of the season, and people aren't really noticing. You're like, oh, well, that was a random good game by a guy that nobody really knew about. So yeah, you, you can't really buy into that too much. And again, he will get some at-bats in that offense, especially because of the injuries that they've had. So he's going to have a chance. But, I mean, come on. did any, Was anybody on Nick Martini at all in any way before opening day? No. You shouldn't be on him now unless you see it over and over again. So let's kind of pump the brakes on that one. And that's actually a good segue uh, into – I know this happens in, in fantasy football, too. probably happens in every sport, fantasy sport. Uh, really, even, even just fans of sports in general. How much stock or do you really put into this first week? Like, how do you really decide, like, yeah, this is something we need to be worried about? Or it's like, hey, it's, it's still early, you know, relax a little bit. Need to re well, probably relax a lot. Um, it, it's it's very easy to overreact, and even just on the team level. I mean, actually, I don't even remember the last time we saw this many sweeps early in the year. My Marlins, of course, getting swept. You know, some teams 
that almost got swept. There was a lot of lopsided series so far. Um, some teams look really good. Some teams don't. But also, you have to look at the, the opponent here. You know, for example, a team that looks really, really good because, you know, they happen to be playing uh, the Oakland A's. Like, I think Cleveland might have one of the worst offenses in the league. I look at their lineup. I'm still just shocked. Like, this is what their lineup looks like. But then they had an outburst. Like, yesterday, they scored a lot of runs. But then I have to keep in mind, okay, they're playing Oakland. Um, so you have to keep that in mind, right? Opponent schedule matters. You know, it's a long haul for the baseball season, but this small sample that we have, you have to keep that in mind. What pitchers have they faced, right? This, these hitters that are, you know, putting on a show, okay. Who are they facing right now early on and vice versa, right? Same thing. Pitchers dominating, you know, Arizona is looking great, looking like they're ready to go back to the world series. They're playing the Rockies, okay? Like the Rockies are not going to be good this year. So, like, let's let's just play the slow game. It's a marathon, right? You have to always take a look at that. And actually, and before we get to uh, some of the questions we got from the viewers, you know, again, first year playing fantasy bo- fo- or fantasy baseball, I have questions. And one thing I was thinking about because I know football, like we spend all week looking at matchups. You know how the defense is whether it's the coverages they're going to use against the wide receivers, how good they are against the run, how much pressure they get on quarterbacks, all sorts of stuff. How much of that comes into play in fantasy baseball? Like how much are you looking at like, oh, this pitcher is going against the Braves, like you said, and maybe I don't want to play him or, oh, this pitcher gets the Angels. I'm getting, Even though he might not be a very good pitcher, I might I might stream him this week. Like how much does that play? And the same with hitters too, same thing with hitters. If they're playing against like, a dominant pitcher do you you know do you think about that that's a great question that's a million dollar question right so when do you decide how much the matchup matters if it matters when you have somebody who is like okay let's start with pitchers like starting pitchers um because for the most part closes relievers you just kind of keep in there right you just don't worry about it the matchup you know doesn't matter so much but for like a starting pitcher if it's a stud starting pitcher one of your top two three pitchers You're just going to leave them in, right? They should be good or at least not horrible against any team. When it gets to those fringe guys, right? Those number four or five, you know, the guys who you mix and match on the bench, those are more matchup dependent. Um, I, a little bit more, I guess, uh, I probably am not adverse to risk enough. I play a little too risky. I I like to trust that I know that a player is going to be good, you know, if if I have faith in him. Uh, so I'll only sit players if it's a really top end offense like Atlanta, you know, like I said, and, um, also you have to, it depends how far you want to dig into it. For example, if it's like a pitcher with fly ball tendencies, you know, not a ground ball pitcher, but a guy who's going to get more fly balls or at least lean more fly ball heavy. You don't want to pitch him or put him in your lineup if he's playing in Coors Field or playing in, you know, a, a pitcher friendly venue or hitter friendly venue or against a team that is homer happy, right? Bad bad matchup there in terms of a team that can hit a lot of home runs versus a pitcher that gives up a lot of fly balls or maybe ha- could have home run issues at times. Um, and then on the other end, as far as hitters, you pretty much are just going to keep your hitters in there. I don't sit hitters based on matchup, even if they're facing a, you know, an ace of a pitcher. The best hitters should still be able to get a hit or two. You know, maybe they're not going to have an amazing game, but usually I'm only going to switch hitters out. If a guy happens to be cold, I'll sit him. If a guy happens to be hot, maybe I'll put him in my lineup off the bench. Um, you know, if something weird happens, like maybe there's a weather concern or something like that. But the main thing I think you want to think about if you're having daily lineups and if you're actually keeping up with it every day, if you're that dedicated, is look for the guys who platoon because there's a lot more players that don't play every day anymore, right? Lefties against a lefty. Uh, Mention that with Benson, for example. Um, I know a player, a lot of people were kind of surprised and disappointed, like Edward Julien was a popular sleeper for the Twins. He didn't start opening day. Why? Well, because he had a lefty out there. Okay, is that going to happen? Yeah, it's going to happen. He, when they face a lefty, he's probably just not going to play. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. If they're facing a lefty, just sit him. But the good thing is now all these platforms, they're up to date. Like, you know, if you go on Yahoo, for example, that's what we do most of ours on. 
if you get close enough to game time, you'll see the little red X, right? Uh, okay, yep. he's not starting. You know, swap him out. So just make that a habit. If you really want to make sure you're on top of things for your fantasy team, is make sure you check your lineup just an hour, maybe two before these games start. Uh, see if anybody's sitting. If so, swap them out with someone who's playing. And, and it really it takes uh, it doesn't take that long. I mean, you don't really have to dive into the matchups. One thing I'll tell you. Don't worry about, and even for DFS, I know people think that this is such a big advantage as you look at batter versus pitcher history. Like, oh, this guy's facing him, you know, 15 times and he has two home runs. Just like, forget it, throw that out the window. It does not matter. That's what happened. It doesn't mean it's what's gonna happen. That's the best way to probably lead yourself wrong uh, is to say, oh, look, he's had success. There's so many times that it means absolutely nothing. So I I don't even consider that. You know, does it have his guy this guy's number? Like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. And yeah, that those little green the little I noticed that on Yahoo, the little numbers where they're batting and when they're out. But I did miss I did miss Devers out the other day because they played at night and I was busy. But anyways, let's get to some of the questions here because we've got some questions coming in. So Brandon, I like this one because he's also his first season. So you and I are together in this, Brandon, trying to figure this out as we go. Um, what is a good stat, in your opinion? Is one and three good? Are you meaning, like, if a hitter goes one for three? Or or do you mean, like, what is a good start? Like, like uh, can you still make the playoffs if you start one and three? I assume you can. You, you can make the playoffs starting one and three in football. Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, Brandon, uh, maybe – clarify if you're talking about like if a if a hitter went one for three is that good is that i think that might be what you mean but uh yeah maybe ask that if so one for three is fine i mean it's not <laughs> not great or terrible it's i mean if a guy can do that i, mean, I guess it day, depends on the i guess it depends on the one right if the one's a home run that's pretty good <laughs> yeah depends what the one was if it was a home run then that's really that's pretty good all right, and then uh, I'm not. I think Ignacio was asking this when we were talking about uh, Lang and the and the closer. I think he was talking about the Tigers. Does this make sense to you, Jax over him? Jax, mm, no. Who's Jax? Jax and Job? Is that who you're talking about? But uh, is that uh, who's the oh, Griffin Jax? Uh, you talking about Griffin Jax for the Twins? Is that who you're talking about? I don't think so because we weren't talking about the Twins. All right, well, okay. if you want to clarify that, we'll, we'll get back to it. Um, and then KD is asking if you plan on making any points league content. Well, I thought about it in the preseason. I I mean, the only points league thing I kind of did was, you know, we did the, the perfect draft. Um, what, three different versions of it? Is that what it was? Three different yeah. ones? Because the way you draft on Yahoo – shouldn't be exactly the same as how you draft on like ESPN, uh, you know, or, or anywhere else because different rankings, different scoring. So ESPN defaults, and I didn't know this until I actually tried it out because honestly, I just don't really play ESPN leagues. We really don't do that for any sport, do we? We just don't do no. ESPN. <laughs> like nothing against it. It's not terrible, but it's just not my favorite platform. But ESPN, I found out that if you join a public league, it defaults to a points league head to head so that's why the rankings are all very different on espn so that was when i did the perfect espn draft and i used those uh avps that was pretty much points league because again you have to look at it differently i'm gonna do like weekly points league content probably not just because honestly less people play that it's just not as popular um you know i put some points league stuff out there last year and you know a lot of people didn't really catch on to it maybe once in a while but both that would be mostly preseason stuff the the thing with points league is you just have to know um it just always check your scoring system because there is no just one way to play points leagues right points leagues can be all very different uh so it just really depends that's also what makes it tough to do content for points leagues like what what does your points league look like you know there there's no one way to do it which is the both aggravating and wonderful thing about fantasy baseball <laughs> yeah it's it's uh it's interesting it's interesting so far i'll say that all right brian looper has a waiver wire question he look he's looking for another bat uh would you prefer conforto or hanniger is it hanniger which one would you prefer between the two 
Haniger, somebody asked uh, last time, I think, about Haniger, uh, like comeback player of the year type of candidate. I mean, sure, oh. if he can stay healthy. Uh, I think Haniger's so far so good. I, what I like is he's hitting kind of in the middle of the order, uh, either fourth or fifth so far. Um, he's in a pretty good lineup. Uh, it's obviously neither one is in a great home park situation. So that's kind of a neutralizer there. Uh, I, if I had to pick between the two, I think I slightly prefer Haniger. Look, Conforto, you pretty much know what you're getting. I would say, look at what he did each of the last two years, like carbon copy. He's probably going to do exactly the same thing. Now, Giants do have a slightly better lineup. They made some additions this year, but it's it's not a dynamic offense. So if I had to pick between the two, I'll go Haniger. All right, there you go, Brian. Thank you. Good luck with that. And then we got Joe Blow. Joe Blow. Loves your content, by the way. Thank you. What's your opinion on Whitlock this year? He's interesting. Is always a, like no real idea what to expect. Like, what are the Red Sox going to do with him? I guess they kind of just need him in the rotation now, right? So many moving parts there. He looked good today, that's for sure. He's a guy who always feel like has the talent and just needs the shot. But why do they never give him the shot permanently? Like, I feel like at any second, they'd be like, okay, we'll put you back in the bullpen. But I would say he's worth a, he's worth a pickup. Definitely. I mean, like I said, obviously against Haniger and the Mariners today look great. So, um, yeah, I, now I did talk about um, on preseason sleepers. Um, you know, I talked a lot about, Boston specifically, mainly on offense. I was big on Bellow last year, and I'm still kind of keeping an eye on him this year. Um, but the guy that I was really more interested in uh, as far as Boston's um, rotation goes, uh, I mean, Tanner Hoke, maybe if he gets a chance, kind of the same. Uh, but the guy that I mentioned was Cutter Crawford. I, I'm still a little more interested in him. We will see. And then Nick Pavetta. Now, I, I'm always very skeptical of Pavetta because, again, he's a guy who could just wound you as soon as you take it. Like, like there's trust issues there, right? So you're like, okay, I'm in. And then you're like, why did I do that? Like, you just <laughs> should have known better. Apparently, he's at our new pitch. Apparently, he's looking really good. Like, maybe, maybe at some point, I'll just say, okay, fine. Like fine, but of course he was actually drafted a lot this year, so I can't just pluck him off waivers. Um, but I'll say I like Cutter Crawford still. Uh, I'll reluctantly buy into Whitlock um, at this point. Um, yeah, let's. I'd like to see it once more, but of course, if you wait and he has another great star, well, guess what? Then everyone else is going to be on top of him. Exactly. All right. Now, speaking of early seasons overreaction. What about the Yankees sweeping the Astros? Are, are, are the Yankees that good? Are the Astros falling? Or was this just, you know, random? Well, I'm not worried about the – I mean, nobody should be worried about the Astros. I mean, we know what they are. Their, their pitching maybe isn't what it used to be. But like I said, there was a lot of lopsided series um, early in the season. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm worried about the Marlins because that's my team. They got swept by the Pirates. How do you do that? The Mets got swept. Um the Guardians look like they swept. Yes, they're the Guardians. Um, I'm not worried at all about the Astros. Um, I think the Yankees could be that good. If Judge actually stays healthy all season, Juan Soto, I've been saying he's going to have his best season, which is saying a lot. Um, yeah, Soto, I really think, was a pretty obvious top five pick in fantasy. You're like, well, he didn't steal bases. Okay, that's fine. But when he leads the league in hitting and goes for 30 plus home runs and was one of the league leaders in runs and RBIs and the less exciting categories, you'll still be glad you had him. So, yeah, I think the Yankees could be that good, but uh, it's obviously kind of in between. All right. And then uh, Joe Blow also asks, what are your thoughts on uh, Crochet? Love it. Uh, I mean, I again, put him on the which what was it called players i'm secretly drafting with my last pick something like yeah, that. yeah one. one of those was, yeah he was on one of those <laughs> so the week before the season started the like hey take this guy with your last pick uh you know take a chance on him 
yeah, if you took a chance on him, you're glad because you don't have to fight for him on waivers. I'm picking him up. He's out there. Um, yeah, I think he's legit. Look, he's another guy who, like all these converted relievers to become starters, which is a weird new thing now this year. All these guys who never threw more than one inning at a time. And then these teams are like, yeah, let's make him a starter. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep my, uh, my patience with Puck. I think I'm still in on Jordan Hicks mostly, and I'm picking up Crochet. So, yeah, if Crochet is out there, I would just pick him up. Yeah, currently rostered in 44% of Yahoo leagues, so could still definitely be out there. Go look for him. And then Popcorn and Milk. What do we expect out of Jared Jones? It's an interesting combination. Yes, uh, <laughs> Jared Jones looks legit. I mean – what was it 10 10 strikeouts right in his debut you can't argue with that i mean he has against the marlins marlins aren't the worst offense uh giving props i'm honoring the pirates for sweeping my team so there you go uh <laughs> i i think jared jones is legit i let's not go ahead and give him the rookie of the year or anything yet but uh he obviously made the rotation for a reason the pirates just think about this they sent skeins down but they kept Jones. I, they didn't have to do that. I mean, Jared Jones showed out enough that, yes, I know they're playing the, the slow game with schemes for a reason. But, uh, yeah, he, there's no reason to doubt Jones at this point. Just be prepared. There will be a time where he goes out and gets hit hard, but then he'll bounce back. So, <laughs> okay. um, at the very least, you know he's going to get you a lot of strikeouts. And that's worth something. All right. Well, there you go. So, don't overreact if he gets lit up because he'll bounce back. And yeah. Josh asking, what are your thoughts on Oswaldo Cabrera? Uh, I liked Cabrera. I'm, I'm a little, I guess, uh, as you can tell, I'm a little uh, hesitant. I mean, I, I liked him last year. I really thought he could deliver. I mean, he, he's got some power. Uh, I really like that he can qualify at a lot of positions. I mean, that's always helpful. I just don't know if he's going to stick. Uh, they got birdie, I guess, just for depth. Uh, LeMahe will be out, what, like three weeks, something like that. Uh, Cabrera's got a shot. He's in a good lineup now. Um, but I'm not going to run out and pick him up just yet. We'll see. I'm going to kind of take a patient approach with him because he still does have some swing and miss issues at the pro level. Um, so, look, if you're in a deeper league, sure, you can go ahead and pick him up. But he's not going to be at the top of my list just yet. All right, there you go. Thanks for the question. And then, uh, yeah, Kier, I know, probably messed up your name. I apologize. We have talk, We did talk about Will Benson earlier in the show, but who would you pick up between, between Bryce Terang or Will Benson? It's going to be Benson. And, uh, yeah, we talked about Benson at the very top. Obviously, Benson made the thumbnail. Uh, I'm telling you in very many non-subtle ways to pick up Will Benson. Uh, but besides that, yeah, Terang did have a nice game, but I'm still skeptical that Brewers infield. I just feel like they're one of those teams. They're going to do a lot of flip-flopping. Um, you know, like Tyler Black got sent down. He's probably going to have to kind of bide his time. But Monastario will come in sometimes. Wentz I thought might be a good sneaky draft pick but then he sat for somebody i honestly had never heard of oliver dunn was playing now it's like i'm i'm probably gonna wait on terrain just because um i i need to see that it's gonna happen more consistently but either besides that either way i'm still picking up benson just because i love benson <laughs> all right there you go thank you and again apologies for probably butchering your name i'm sure i did my apologies uh, Ober was lit up today, so Rocky, we got our first uh, our first um, celebrity cameo. Rocky Balboa nice. in the house. What's up, champ? Uh, Ober was lit up today, and oh, my ERA and WHIP have skyrocketed. <laughs> That's how I felt after uh, who was it? My uh, Severino, because I didn't have anybody. I didn't have anybody pitch like the first two days or whatever. And then finally, I had Severino pitch, and oh, hey, look at that! I had like a. 15 ERA and like an eight whip or something, whatever it was. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, sweet. <laughs> it's not the best when you see like one player just basically just destroyed your entire. But this week. is like what's so weird for me for fantasy baseball so far. And I know everybody on here is probably like totally used to this, but you know, fantasy football, it's like 
it's basically one day and it's over, right? I mean, maybe you're like, hey, Monday, you got the Thursday night game, but then maybe Monday, you know, Monday night, maybe you have some players. Here I'm like, okay, I've I've had two days of fantasy baseball and I haven't had a single pitch thrown on my team. Not one guy has pitched a pitch, like throwing a single pitch. Like I have no stats. Like what is this? So weird. So it's going to take a little getting used to there. And then, of course, the first guy that pitches, Severino, gets lit up. And I'm like, oh, maybe it was better when I had nobody pitching. It was better when I just had zeros. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you're like, why didn't I just bench everybody? Sometimes see you feel like that. But, yeah, I, like if you had Ober, then forget it. Like he he was definitely, we're talking about the worst of the worst. Obviously, right now, he's, he's holds the throne for the worst outings. Um, And I was... I was buying in like I wasn't on him. I tell you, you know, there's always and I say this because like on social media and, you know, I everything I read and look at, I'm in tune with all the sites and the fancy analysts, right? Industry people. And I feel like Ober was one of like the biggest darlings of like the fantasy industry, um, like not a big like, pub name, you know, from like the major outlets. But like the insiders and the experts and the analysts, wherever everyone's just like all over Bailey Ober. So I was kind of halfway there. I'm like, yeah, I see it, but I'm not jumping over him. I didn't really hype him up too much in the preseason or anything. I'm like, yeah, okay. But I know there was one video where like, yeah, I take a chance on Ober. Um, yeah, that that really makes you regret things if you head over. Um, hey, Zach Eflin got lit up too. And that was that because Toronto's offense is just really good? Maybe. Is Zach Eflin suddenly bad? I don't think so. Ober, I think I'm more worried about than Eflin because Ober, he's not really a like stuff kind of guy in terms of pitcher. Like he's just not overly impressive. He's just gonna need to get by with his command. And yeah, he he didn't. He sure didn't. Um, yeah, skyrocketing in a bad way, right? Skyrocketing we usually yeah. think is good, and it's it's definitely not good. So you have to wait on Ober. I don't know what went on with him, but let's. Let's hope for better times ahead. The worst part, I think, was that he got lit up by the Royals. I think that's the worst part. <laughs> Not good. Not good. All right. Josh saying, can Brian Hayes and Yellick come back players? I mean, Yellick wasn't, doesn't have much to come back from. He wasn't, he wasn't too bad last year. Um, I mean, come back like to MVP form? No. But yeah, he's, he is what he is. Hayes, I don't know. People are interested in Hayes. I'll tell you what, Hayes, I think is just he's okay. Like he's just he's okay. I he's not bad, but he's not great. Like he'll hit for like 270-ish, maybe 280 average. Maybe he can get 20 home runs, steal you a few bases. It's like he's he's okay. He's like wow. what, what do they call it? Uh mid, kind of mid. Yeah, <laughs> mid. Exact kind of guys I don't like in fantasy. Right. All right, Zipzack, what are your thoughts on Reed Detmers? Uh, Reed Detmers is another guy who I feel like I was too high on last year and kind of let me down, didn't take the step forward that I wanted, uh, which basically describes Griffin Canning every year. And now that's that's a total, like, just I blame myself. Every time I fall for Griffin Canning, it's just I'm no one to blame but myself for actually believing this year would be different, right? It's like Lucy with the football. It's like, yeah. yeah. This time she's going to hold it. Don't worry. Yeah. No, I'm done. Griffin can't just forget it. I'm dropping Griffin Canning. Um, Reed Detmers, again, I'm like, I, I need to be probably skeptical, more skeptical than I want to be. So I'm going to try to not be all in. I mean, I also feel like... Um, I mean, obviously, it was good today, and it was against the Orioles. But, uh, man, I just worry that when I'm finally like, okay, yeah, this is it. It's going to come together. Then he's going to get hit hard. You know what I mean? So I'm going to play the waiting game on him. All right. And then Steve Yeager, I think. Doesn't Steve join? Don't you join? Doesn't he join us for football as well? I recognize Steve. I feel like I feel like he's with us for football. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm wrong. But I feel like you are, Steve. But maybe not. Anyways. But has Arnado got his first hit yet? He has not. I just checked. Uh, 0 for 3. That's uh, what's up with him. I don't know. I really thought this year would be different. I mean, obviously, it's early. Three games is a little too soon to to write off a, a guy who makes the all-star team every year. But I really thought he would get off to a better start this year. Um, maybe he just is just not a, a fan of spring. I don't know. 
I don't know. Um, Maybe I wouldn't worry. He has allergies. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's it's the the pollen. Um, yeah. <laughs> look, and they're they're playing the Dodgers. I mean, he's. It's too early to panic on him. Obviously, he's a guy. I think we we've seen enough from him of his career that we're not going to be worried. So I would just say just hold tight. Look, if another bad week or two, maybe he comes a, a buy low candidate. So I wouldn't worry. All right, there you go. He doesn't have a hit, but don't worry. All right, Scott. Uh, head to head, had the catcher Murphy go to the IL. Needs a replacement out of Melendez, Alvarez, or. Is it Heim? Heim? Heim. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be E I M, but it doesn't matter. Um, hey, you got some good choices there. I thought you, I mean, a lot of people just automatically just pivot to Darno, which is fine. I like Alvarez. I mean, the power upside is just so tangible. I mean, we've seen it already. He actually off to kind of a good start. You know, you're not getting a great batting average, but I think he'll make up for the power. I think Heim is fine. I worry that he's going to play less than Alvarez in terms of seeding time, you know, at catcher. So the Melendez is another player. Just kind of feel like I keep waiting, you know, you keep waiting for it to happen. And like, I think he just is what he is. Right. I don't think maybe there just isn't another level to his game. Like this is it. Like, <laughs> you know, Oh, he's going to enter his prime. And no, I think that's just what he is. So I like Alvarez. All right. There you go. Alvarez is Alvarez. It is. Hope you get him. Uh, Popcorn and Milk, just real quick, said he started the season with 17 innings and only one earned run, and now he's at 22 innings with 19 earned runs. That's uh, that hurts. Yeah, it sounds like a Bailey Ober owner to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tristram, who I definitely know is with us on football. What's up, Tristram? Good What's to see up? you. All right, uh, he needs a sleeper. These are all these are always tough questions because not only does he need well, every in a 15 man league, everybody on the waiver wire is probably a sleeper, <laughs> honestly, but. He's a sleeper at second base in a 15-man league. Who are you have any suggestions for Tristan? Uh, okay, and I know he plays in NL only and AL only in all the deepest and the uh, most difficult leagues possible. So, not known who's available. Um, a couple of guys we already talked about, Oswaldo Cabrera being picked up all over. He does qualify at second base. That's nice. So, obviously, you could take a chance on him or Terang. Um Again, I'm a little more, uh, a little skeptical about him. But again, you're talking about a deep league. You're not going to have that many choices. So uh, at second base, uh, let me see. I'm trying to figure out who like might actually be available in that deep of a league. Who, so I'm uh, looking at some guys that are pretty widely available, like with Merrifield, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go deeper, I guess. By the way, there's somebody named C. Biggio, Craig Biggio. Oh, uh, Kevin Biggio. Oh, wow. Is that Craig's son? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, oh, it that's is. Pretty, that's pretty um, cool. Well, Davis Schneider, also in Toronto, if he played more regularly, I mean, I, I like his potential. But probably the guy looking at is Caballero in Tampa Bay because he is playing regularly. And he has some speed. And I think he might show off a little bit more power so i'll say caballero if he's available maybe jared triolo of pittsburgh that's getting deep but obviously it's as deep so all right there you go tristram good luck good to see you glad you made it on here so we got some ober we got some definitely we got some ober pain here ober in all three leagues for popcorn and milk ober pitched like he was drunk <laughs> Yeah. All right, baseball player saying Capasano or Sal Perez. You have don't you have both of those players? Or you have one of them, or at least don't you have Perez? I have Perez. I have Perez. He's actually been pretty good for me, I think. I feel like. I mean, yeah, I he went he went three for five today with a home run, four RBIs, two runs scored. He's been one yeah. of my best players, actually. <laughs> Uh, it's good to see he's off to a good start. I mean, you got to go with, with Sal. I mean, he's so consistent. And actually, despite being pretty old for a major league player, he's going to get some of the most at-bats at catcher. So I love Camposano. He's probably my favorite sleeper at catcher. Uh, but Sal is just got to go with Sal. I mean, just so reliable, getting you the power numbers. And despite being more of a slugger, he really doesn't hurt you uh, for batting average that much. All right, there we go. 
I like it because I have him. Are you worried about Max Fried? Fried? Freed. No, Fried Freed. Freed. He got Max fried Freed. on. He got fried by the Phillies, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> so are you worried about him? That's just one of those players you're going to have to give a pass to. I mean, we, we've seen. We know what he is. It just the Phillies just had him that day, right? It's a good offense. He was off first game. I mean, I don't, I don't, unless there's something with a guy like that, unless we know that there's a sign that maybe there's something physically wrong, they're like, oh, he felt discomfort. Like, okay, then you maybe worry a little bit. Like, maybe there's something bothering him. But otherwise, you're just going to have to just move on and just, just forget it ever happened. <laughs> if only it was that simple. Uh, Zibzak again, how urgently are you acting to grab Michael Garcia? If he's still out there, the, I'm, putting in a claim right now. I mean, if your waivers run tonight, you can go, go grab him. Yes. I, I haven't mentioned him on waiver video because I just assume most competitive leagues he's gone. Uh, try to look his. Yeah. He's 73, he's 73 73% rostered on Yahoo. So not widely available. Yeah. If, if he's still out there, yes. Urgent, go get him. Number one, number one choice power, a little bit of power now, in addition to the speed. Yeah. Get him. And he's hitting lead off most games. All right, you say number one waiver wire, but should you also be running to grab to the waiver wire to grab Jared Jones? Uh, I think you can walk. You don't have to run. <laughs> okay. uh, again, I, I'm not going to sell rookie of the year. Uh, look, he had some strikeouts, but again, it was the Marlins, not the greatest offense. And um, there will be a time where he does get hit hard. He's a rookie pitcher. That's just what happens. So um, I think you can grab him just, again, you always have to kind of temper expectations with rookie pitchers. I don't care how talented they are. I don't care how good they look in an outing or two. Uh, I could go back even just last year and some of the best young pitchers and just mention some times where they got lit. So, And then Steve saying, yep, he does watch us on football. I knew it. Welcome. There you go. Uh, Rocky Balboa again saying Ruiz has been demoted to the bench. Should he keep him for steals or just cut bait? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I could say he got demoted. He's probably platooning now because they want to look today. He let off and he, he had four at bats. So he's not, he didn't really get demoted or anything. Lawrence Butler, they want to get him in there. He's going to play. Uh, Ruiz is going to be a guy who's not playing every day, but like I said, he let off today. And he's actually getting some base hits. So I would keep him for sure. Um, uh, yeah, don't, this is, I would say also, we talked about reacting to stats and bad games or whatever. For certain players, don't overreact to playing time too much. Like I said with Julian, there's a lot of players who just don't play every day. They platoon, right? But that doesn't mean that they don't have value in fantasy. It really is definitely has value. All right, so there you go. Don't don't cut bait. Don't panic yet. All right, Josh, uh, thoughts on Colt Keith as a temporary replacement for Royce Lewis? Uh, he was hoping on Camonero, but he got injured in the minors. So <laughs> how do you feel about Colt Keith? I like Keith. He's a guy I didn't bang the drum too loudly for just because he might be someone who's slightly better in real life than fantasy, um, not as toolsy. And I don't just don't know if he has a ton of power upside um, and he's not really a base stealer. So I think he, he'll, he'll be a guy who can get you by the position. If you know what I mean, I think he'll be fine. He'll be, he'll be pretty solid. I think his, he will have better days to come. Um, but yeah, for a temporary replacement. And again, with Royce Lewis temporary, um, Right now, we're probably looking at a month minimum. That's what I heard. So, uh, just be prepared. So, okay, so that uh, we do still have some other questions, but that that brings me to a question that I have. Speaking of, <clears throat> excuse me, injured players that may or not be worth holding on to. Uh, Matt McLean is on the sixty-day injured list. Like it. What what is the cutoff for you where you're like, nah, I don't I don't need to hold this guy anymore and and take up a roster spot, especially for a team like mine where every IL spot is full and I still have guys that I can't even put in IL spots that are you know what I mean? I have guys I can put in IL, but my IL spots are full. 
Like, are you holding guys like Matt McLean in that that are, you know, on the long-term disabled list? Like, sorry, injured list, I guess is what they call it now. Um, or do you just say, nah, it's, it's not worth it? Yeah, I mean, you you hit it exactly. It, it all depends. What is your What does your team look like? Do you have every IL spot already taken? Yes. If so, then a guy like that, you probably can just cut and move on. Like if you had Garrett Cole, obviously if you have him, you drafted him. So you already knew what you were getting into pretty much. Garrett Cole, you stash. And if it takes two, three months, you wait two, three months. I mean, Matt McClain, when he plays, yeah, could be one of the better second basemen in the game. But shoulder surgery? And then they said, we hope to have him back this season. Uh, that's not what you want to hear. So I, I hate to say it, Chris, but you could probably just cut it. <laughs> All right. Okay. I probably I probably will, but I have to wait, so I can't. I don't have any waiver claims left because my whole team was on IL and I had to make a bunch of moves. All right, 127 EMH has a couple questions, and just for the record, this is a 12-team league. He wanted us to know that. So, uh, how do you feel about Julian at second base? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the faith with him because again, he will at least see the strong side of the platoon. He's got power upside. I, I guess I'm not really expecting a breakout you know in terms of season if you want to call it that um but look he is when he does play he does hit near the top of the lineup um at least i think he will going forward they're gonna need him even more now royce lewis out like we just mentioned gonna you know someone else gonna have to step up so the lineup has to shift a little bit obviously that's not good for the twins offense but there's definitely a path for him so i would say i still like julian all right, and then he also asked, should Rafaela be rostered or just wait? He can be. Uh, he's off to a decent start, too. We know he's definitely uh, someone who can steal some bases, and I like that he can slaughter multiple positions, too. So not a must own, but I think definitely somebody who, who could be rostered. Uh, just depends. Like, if you're picking him up, who are you dropping for him? But, yeah, I think definitely worth, worth keeping. Always the question you got to ask, who are you dropping for him? Unless it's somebody like a mustache. All right, then we got the D Lock 23 Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco, Garcia or Hoskins? If you had to choose. Um, if it's Michael Garcia, then I'm going to go with him. I like him better. I mean, Hoskins obviously got good power. Um, I still prefer Garcia. If it's Avisel Garcia, I'm going to have to pass, and I'll say Hoskins, but uh, I'm assuming you mean Michael Garcia. All right, and then I definitely like this question because I also have Jackson Holiday. So, Captain, Tr who's in my NA spot, uh, Captain Tricky asking, thoughts on Jackson Holiday? Should I include him in a trade or keep him for when he gets the call? You know what? That's, uh, that's a very tricky question, actually. That's... That's a good one. All right. What do you do with the guy who is the top prospects in all of baseball, at least according to some, and is just sitting in the minors waiting? Um, they can't keep him down forever, can they? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they could. For the sake of my fantasy baseball team, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, I don't see it happening. I'm going to I'm gonna assume – May, early June at the latest, we have to see him up. I just think we have to. So I'm going to say right now, if, you, if you're if you trading him right now, you're probably selling low. Um, because once he does get the call, yeah, you're either going to be glad that you have him or you can get a lot more for him. So I think you're just going to have to keep him um, because I doubt anybody's going to overpay for a guy who right now is not helping them. So, and again, I'm assuming this, of course, is a redraft league, but um, yeah, just hold, hold and uh, wait till his value shoots up. Hold and hope. Captain Tricky, we can hold and hope together. Yeah. Hopefully he gets the call sooner, sooner yeah. rather than later. And then uh, D-Lock was, yes, it was Michael Garcia. So definitely grab him. Uh, Timmy Tam, is there any chance of Spencer Jones being called up this season? Is he worth a stash? I mean, look, they have Giancarlo Stanton. Uh, there's obviously a very good chance <laughs> that uh, that he gets called up because he or Aaron Judge could get hurt at any moment. So, 
Yeah, I think there's a decent chance. I don't know if he's worth stashing if it's not a deep league. Like, it depends if you got multiple NA spots. Like, um, by the way, Tris, I see you forcing the James Wood reference in there. Uh, just an excuse to mention him. I stashed James Wood, by the way, in one of our leagues, which I'm shocked that you didn't. But um, with Spencer Jones, I don't know that he's guys worth stashing right now. Uh, I don't see him getting the call anytime soon. I know he looked good this spring. I know he's a good prospect, but I think Yankees, especially, they're off to such a good start. He's probably not getting the call until at least the second half of the season, unless they just have multiple, multiple injuries. So um, probably not yet. All right. And then Birch uh, saying Helsley did not look sharp in the St. Louis game. Are we panicking? Are we worried? Uh, I wasn't even going to think to talk about him because, again, we're talking about one outing for a reliever. Um, I did see, and again, I, I take this all with a big, huge grain of salt. Uh, but Helsley, I think, and Gallegos, both velocity was down like one, two takes in one inning or whatever it was. It's like, no, I'm not going to worry yet. Um, like it's, it's been three days, right? Four days. So uh, keep an eye, like, don't just ignore it. Right. If guy looks terrible, it, what, what happens tomorrow? Because Adam looks terrible again. Okay. Then I start to, you know, raise an eyebrow, but I'm not worried yet. All right. There you go. Not time to panic yet. And then 127 EMH also saying little. I know this is a guy you talked about in one of the uh, videos before the right before the season. Yep. You have him in your rotation, or is he more like a streamer? So this is a case where I outsmarted myself because uh, with him, and I saw this because I mentioned Zach Eflin, who again a lot of people, people, not just me, a lot of people had him as a like Cy Young dark horse. Like watch out, he could make, have a huge breakthrough, you know, uh, and he got rocked. So then I'm like, okay, I was all about Zach Littell. Let's let's wait and see because he's facing Toronto also. So what did I do? I kept him on my bench. What did he do? He looked great. Uh, so I'm like, okay, I don't. I'm not gonna kick myself too hard for that, right? I don't. I don't blame myself for thinking that he might get hit hard too. Um, so I am gonna have him in my rotation now because I'm like, okay, I was on him for a reason. Um, he looked good against Toronto. He should look good again going forward. So I think right now I will put him in my rotation. Um, yeah. All right. There you go. Fire him up. And then Yakir, again, apologies if that's not how you pronounce your name, has another one. Churio or Langford? Langford. You know, I was I was team Langford uh, right before the season started, and I'm still on Langford. I mean, there's no reason not to be. But uh, – I don't know. Jackson Shuria leading off, uh, at least in one game he was, showing the speed. This is going to be close. I mean, really, you're asking one or the other. It's like, why not both? <laughs> but, I mean, if you have to pick one, I don't, I don't think there's a right or a wrong decision. They're both going to be studs. So, I mean, obviously, Shuria might get you some more steals. Langford probably will hit for more power. So, that's the only thing I would, I would say. But I still lean Langford just a little bit because he's on the Rangers. All right, and then back to back, Nate, back to Jackson Holiday. Is he worth stashing if you don't have an NA spot? Ooh, now that is even trickier. That's tough. I mean, it, it depends on what your bench situation is. How many bench spots do you have? Um, if you can get away with it, like you don't have to rely on your, your bench players to, to fill time for you, sure. Um, but I, I also, like I said, just be careful. I'm not going to assume that he's definitely going to be up, you know, by early May. I think it's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, you know, if, if you if it's going to actively hurt you because you're missing games from position players because you don't have a bench player to put in there cause, just because you're stashing Holiday, then I wouldn't do it. If you can afford to get away with it, then I would. All right. Uh answer a lot of times is it depends <laughs> obviously yeah. um so noah's asking is it okay to drop wilson Contreras for Camposano? i wouldn't i mean it's okay i like you know i love Camposano, but i don't think that wilson Contreras needs to be dropped i think he'll be fine like i know we're all kind of very 
disappointed with the Cardinals so far. It's still early. I mean, actually, the Cardinals are winning tonight. Looks like they're beating the Dodgers. Um, now, nah, I like uh, Contreras fine. So, I mean, it's okay to do that. But again, you don't want to get carried away by the flashy new thing and forget, oh, yeah, Contreras has been like pretty good for the last few years. And then we got a trade question. I know we like trade questions. Josh says, got offered Edwin Diaz and Sterling Marte for Langford. Take the offer and run or ask for more. And then right. Langford, is he a buy low or a sell high for you? Or a hold? These, these are the tasty questions. Uh, and <laughs> the first, hey, we're not waiting, by the way. The first trade videos are going to come out this week too. Buy low and sell high. Is Langford a sell high? To some extent, yeah. I mean, is it possible for a guy to be like a rookie of the year candidate and you sell high on him in the first week of the season? I think so. Because somebody is probably going to will is willing to overpay for what they think he's going to do. You know, like, oh, God, he's going to be, you know, rookie of the year and MVP. He's going to hit 400. He's going to hit 50. <laughs> you know how people get with rookies, right? Yep. Is Diaz and Marte enough? I mean, Diaz was drafted before Langford, at least until last week of the season. I like Marte as a bounce back candidate. So do I think Diaz and Marte could outperform, outproduce as a duo Langford by year's end? Yes. Like, I think that's actually a fair trade. Could you get more? I think you can. So I would say start a bidding war. Like, see who else likes Langford, right? See, like, if there's somebody in your league you know, or maybe you don't know the people in your league, but like, hey, um, look, I love the kid and you know i know he's off to a hot start but i really looking for like whatever i mean if you're looking for saves or you know see what else you can get I and mean, it doesn't hurt to feel multiple offers go ahead and, and and throw out the trade offers and then say well you know i got something in the wings so um just so you know i'm just want to give you a chance you know like you're doing them a favor <laughs> there you go little uh little trading pro tip right there all right, Raphael asking, is Paul Skeenis? Is that how you pronounce it? Skeenis? Worth a stash? Uh, Skeens. I think it's just Skeens. Skeens. Okay, Skeens. Yes, he's definitely a stash. Uh, I don't think we'll wait too long before he's up. Um, I mean, people are running, you know, if you want to run to get Jared Jones, I mean, if he gets called up, when he gets called up, I should say, yeah, everyone's going to be running to get him. So if you can stash him now, do it. Um, just so you know, it might take a few weeks, but just, yeah, I think he's definitely worth a stash. And then Rodrigo Paxton, I assume you know who Paxton is. Yes or no? Uh, I'm going to say no, unless you are really hurting a starting pitcher already. I mean, like, I know he'll look good sometimes and he'll get hurt a lot of times. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of done with him i guess <laughs> okay and then i like this one from flavio because i also have max mayer and he's I, I i assume he's going to make an appearance and pitch at some point right like he, he definitely will uh we'll see if he does better than any of the other marlins pitchers um he'll still, be pitching tomorrow still, I mean, actually I mean, he's still stashing him, right? He hasn't he hasn't done anything to make you doubt him, right? Because he hasn't pitched yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? Maybe stash is the right word because let's wait and see all these Marlins pitchers, you know, running the bed so far this season. They face the Angels. It's not the worst, but... Yeah, let's wait and see how he actually looks first. So let's stash him, let's bench him, but let's maybe be patient. Well, Flavio, I will say I am starting him with very little confidence tomorrow, but that's because I have to. I mean, my pitchers, I or, have. Or if you have to. Yeah, I know yeah, it's the Angels. See, he's like, yeah, it's the Angels. I know, but what do we say about, you know, Rodgers and Pug? Like, it's the Pirates. Okay, well, the Pirates put up, what, nine runs? It's like, yeah. I mean, my other pitcher, I have IL, 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 IL. Literally, I have every healthy pitcher in my lineup, and everybody else is on the IL. So I have to start him, so I hope he does great tomorrow. Hey, you know, one guy I will say that did do great, I think you did talk about him on the waiver wire video, was Jack Flaherty. Yeah, yeah, Flaherty. And look, that's 
a great uh, a great segue there because you talk about you know asking about Myers and uh, or Meyer and uh, Skeens and you know the rookies and the young pitchers get all the hype, but sometimes it's the boring older pitchers. And he's not even old, but you know some of the times these guys who are ready for a bounce back season are the ones who just need to stay healthy or whatever. Like I know it didn't quite work out with Severino and his first start. It might still. Flaherty is another guy. It's like, hey, take a chance, right? Maybe he actually stays healthy this year. Maybe actually is consistently good. We'll see. But that's a, a good example of a guy who could have a bounce back season. So it doesn't always have to be the young pitcher. You know, speaking of another old guy that you like that I grabbed, J.D. Davis has been pretty good for me. He's got a hit in every game, two home runs. Not bad exactly not a boring veteran right completely boring on a horrible team terrible offensive context but he knows how to hit right he just can't play defense and you know uh that doesn't always put it together because he has some injury history too but I, i'm telling you jd davis one of those really boring late sleepers that you plug in your lineup like hey he's actually hitting look like, how do he wind up with you know 25 home runs could happen it could. Let's hope for it. My team needs it. All right, Maverick, Mav, Evan Phillips, or Lords? Lords, Guriel? Guriel. Well, those are very different types of players. Uh, Evan Phillips, you're asking like, because I'm I'm assuming oh, he's... he's asking, so he's saying who'd win that trade, Evan Phillips okay. or Lords? I was going to say, that can't be a waiver wire question. Like, there's no way he's not rostered. Okay. Um, Who wins that trade? what do you need do you need i mean you got a, a closer versus a hitter so if you i would just say straight up look we know phillips uh is a solid not amazing but solid closer should be fine he was drafted probably higher than guriel i would say in a vacuum phillips i like guriel um, but i think you could probably get something better for a guy like phillips so uh probably phillips but it really just depends on need um I think it's almost fair. Almost fair. Almost fair. All right, then, Rodrigo, uh, are you adding Mackenzie Gore and drop? So is it a good idea to add Mackenzie Gore and drop Canning? Yeah, like I said, I'm dropping Canning. I'm just, I'm done. I should have known better. Shame on me. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but still, I just... Uh, I'll take a chance on Gore. You know, Gore will be this year's maybe shame on me again because I, I was big on him last year and it was very inconsistent. Not terrible, but it didn't quite come together. And this year, it's it's kind of, I don't say make or break. He's still pretty young, but like you got to show something more, right? So, yeah, I would do that. Um, Gore is another guy. Just be careful, right? We just pick your pick your spots. Pick your spots. <laughs> Like when he faces right, the Braves, there. maybe don't start him. And then back to back, Nate again. Uh, would you drop Leclerc? 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 Yeah. Yes. For Foley. Yes. For Foley, the because... guy who crushed Lang. Yeah. Foley <laughs> crushed your your Lang. Um, yeah, Leclerc didn't look good. Uh, I don't think he's going to hold on to a closer job. So I, if I had to speculate for saves right now, I'd rather take Foley. Yeah, I mean, he looks like the closer in Detroit. We'll see. And then AIF, thoughts on Parker Meadows? I was pretty big on Parker Meadows preseason. I'm really keeping a, an eye on that Tigers lineup and, and who they're hitting where. Not just is he playing, but also where is he hitting. Because um, I thought most, you know, most games, that, you know, when they're facing right, he was going to be the leadoff hitter. He did lead off today. Um, but I think he might bounce around a little bit too. Sometimes he might drop to the bottom of the order, but I still like Meadows overall. I think he's definitely a, a solid pick if he's available. All right. And then 127 EMH with another one. Do you have a reliever for a hold saves league? That's kind of waiting in the wings that you have your eye on or relievers. There are, oh, it's a hold and saves league. Okay. Uh, there are always very many closers that I got my eye on as far as who's available. Um, I mean, that depends because you're saying you're in a, a league that uses hold and saves, probably a lot of relievers that might be available in most leagues aren't in yours. So it depends how deep 
you're getting. Like I mentioned Shelby Miller early. That's pretty deep, right? Nobody's really on Shelby Miller, especially as a potential uh, closer, but he's someone I think could take the job eventually from Foley, right? If Foley takes the job from Lang, which maybe he already has. Uh, how much deeper do we want to get? Hector Norris, I think, is already is probably rostered in a hold save league, but he's somebody who is probably going to get some saves and some holds. Uh, so he's somebody, I mean, Aroldis Chapman seems obvious, even though he's not the closer, he could get into that role. Anybody in Tampa, but especially Jason Adam, he's somebody who probably is already rostered in your league. Uh, again, let's see how deep. How do, do we get here? <laughs> in Miami, um, if Tanner Scott either gets hurt or fails, Anthony Bender. Bender is a guy who's kind of in the mix for the closer role two years ago. He's had some injuries. He's pretty effective uh, when given the chance. So Bender is a deeper name, but somebody who could be waiting in the wings. All right, there you go. And then J. Cole said he used his number one waiver on Ruined, but not ruined but maybe he ruined it uh on your okay is that bad did he make a mistake i don't think so i'm all over Uribe. i'm gonna talk about him again this week's uh waiver wire he was a guy who um i drafted like five different places despite not having devin williams why would i do that and these were not all leagues that use holds i drafted him in case what happened happened and it happened before the season like i swear i didn't didn't know this was going to happen with devin williams but i i i do feel like i got lucky but i also feel like i knew if something happened to devin williams uribe was going to be the guy i don't know why people are like oh mcgill or, or piams like why 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 <laughs> experience they're older like no but uribe is clearly their best uh reliever after devin williams and guess what the Brewers figured that out. They gave him the chance. He's going to be the closer for three months, I think. I don't think he'll blow it. So, yeah, I think that's that's totally fine. All right, there you go. You can feel good about it. And then TD Meeks, start voting Francis tomorrow or wait and see? Oh, man, I, I'm i probably going to wait. He uh, did mention him as one of those lotto ticket type of last picks, and I did draft him in two leagues, not too much. But what is it? Houston, right? They're playing Houston. Like, nah, I'm, I'm going to wait. All right. There you go. And it looks like we are pretty much all caught up. 127 EMH saying thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you guys. Don't forget, waiver wire videos out there. I think there's probably some guys on there that are still available on the waiver wire that we didn't talk about tonight. We got panic video coming. Uh, what else? Trade videos. What else we got coming, Pierre? That's right. Every week we can do a buy low, sell high, players to trade, players not to drop. The reverse panic. Uh, we're going to do <laughs> who should you be panicking about, who should you not. And then, again, sometimes it's best to to play the waiting game and just be patient. So I'll, I'll tell you some players not to not to worry about. And we do more live streams, of course, as well. Try to do more uh, that we can. And try something new this year. We do this for football. It uh, not only – is it popular but i like to say i think it works pretty well because we nailed some players uh that is like a pre-waiver wire right because waiver wire is like hey pick these guys up now but sometimes you got to pick up a player before everybody else knows about them so beat the breakout is going to come out it's like hey stash these guys you want to know who to stash i'll tell you who to stash very excited for that i think that's i think that's one of the biggest edges in in just fantasy in general is getting ahead of the waiver wire definitely and then we had a couple questions under the gun here jay asking what do you think about andrew abbott very risky gonna wait at least two weeks see how he has you know a couple of belt starts under his belt and we'll see how he looks um i'm gonna wait on abbott all right and then joseph says is either ben brown or brady singer worth a look Ben Brown is interesting, and then he got rocked. Uh, again, very short outing, but uh, going to have to keep an eye on him. He would be a stash only at this point. Talented, but not experienced. Um, so Ben Brown, let's just keep an eye on for now. Brady Singer, another guy. Am I willing to get burned again? Um, 
baby. I look great. Uh, he's just so up and down, right? He's just one of those players. You just don't know what to expect. So I, I'm going to consider him a streamer, right? If I feel like it's a plus matchup, you know, a, a team that I feel will play into his hands because he's a ground ball sinker type of pitcher, right? If, if I feel like he can get by with it, I'll stream him, but I'm not going to just make him part of my rotation. All right. There you go. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Happy Easter to everybody being on here on uh, on this holiday. Appreciate you jumping on. Don't panic yet. Unless Pierre says panic on the video tomorrow. Make sure you, go, you check that out. The panic video tomorrow and all the videos this week to help you out. And we'll be live as often as we can. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time.